Good morning, it is 2.05 a.m. which means I've been awake for 18 hours here in Iceland and we're going out for the second photo shoot of the day. We uh, just finished shooting sunset which happened at midnight and it was insane, like absolutely incredible. Probably kicking myself for not vlogging it but I will share some of that footage with you to begin this vlog. And now we're heading off into this sweet canyon to hopefully catch sunrise less than three hours later. So, good morning from Iceland and the midnight sun. Let's go. So I need to introduce Mr. Thomas Heaton, who I'm pretty certain most of you already know. And why is because he was part of my finger breaking incident yes, today. Yes, but not partly responsible. Right, I was partly responsible. You were wholly responsible. 100% <laughs> responsible. We were throwing the frisbee around and I took a dive. It's got it all on camera. Slow-mo, yeah. high def. Incredible, I absolutely tore my finger to shreds, dislocated it. It's like sideways in that I'm, shot. I'm, I'm being serious here. I'm actually gonna have to blur the footage and it's then put a bad. warning over it. It's like, we, when it happened, everyone's reaction was <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> disgusting. Yeah. His finger was at like a 90 degree angle and it's all on camera. And I'm, not, I'm gonna have to blur it, do a quick voiceover warning and then maybe give the uh, Psychopathic I don't know, viewer discretion. Yeah, viewer advised. discretion. I'll unblur it for one uh, second and that's it. So we're trying to survive here for the, the second shoot after 18 hours of being awake and it's so beautiful that sunset I just told oh, them about. So good. Wow. We needed that. Well, I needed that. I've had poor luck in Iceland for the past two years. That was something special. Yeah, that was great. So it's time to uh, get the finger all healed up. I went to the Icelandic hospital and was greeted by a really nice doctor who was on call and a nurse and they fixed it up for me. Yeah. They pulled it apart and like snapped it back into place. It was amazing. Yeah, no, I'm sure it was. So I think I'm very lucky that it wasn't much worse and I can still hold the gimbal with my left hand, which is cool. And it was my left hand. Which is always handy. <laughs> All right. If you're, if you're a right hand there, anyway. <laughs> All right, let's continue the vlog and see if we can get some good light for a sunrise. Yeah, and some sleep after that. So I'm right beside the creek, I'll try and speak up just a little bit. I found the composition that I've been searching for. Uh, the whole rest of the crew is actually further down river. I think to get a little bit more distance and separation between these little waterfalls and that one big spire that you can't see in this frame because I'm so close. But I'm also out of their frames, which is really important. So I wanted to try and find my own little corner of this little stream to try and just get one composition for the uh, the last two shoots here in Iceland, including just the last one. I got a number of really, really good shots. And because it's like 2.30, 2.45 in the morning, I'm just gonna focus on getting this one shot I've got the 16 to 35 on the EOS R at f11 two seconds no filters straight up just getting a nice uh, image here I might bracket it a little bit but the idea is just get one shot and uh, and then finish the day with that you know when is it that you ever go out and and just take one image you know I think that that's kind of important sometimes to so focus on something that uh, I don't know that you're really looking forward to find something in a location and then uh, and then get that shot and be proud of it. So that's what I'm gonna try and do right now. Thor just came down and he saw my composition. He was like, man, you got some good eye. And I was like, I know. And then I showed him what I was doing and he was like, why don't you manually bracket that image? And I had set it up for just a five shot bracket 
uh, through the internal bracketing system of the USR. I was just going to blend those brackets together and create a nice image of post processing to share with you here in this video. And I hadn't really thought about actually manually bracketing uh, each uh, individual image. So when he showed me how to, well, how he does it, is he pulled up the histogram on the display and actually just uh, uh, set the shutter to different uh, speeds so that the histogram was uh, light to dark. So we go from like really, really bright highlights to, to dark and bring it off of that one side. And it actually, it worked really well. And then I sort of picked different focusing points uh, throughout, but it's at F11, so it should all be pretty well the same throughout the whole image. So I'm gonna get back on the computer, blend those together, and hopefully we get something like this. Okay, and we are now in the computer. These are the six manually bracketed images that I took uh, beside the little stream at that second location. And what I wanna do uh, before I import them is go back to you here in the editing suite for one second to just touch again on the fact that I only changed my shutter speed when I was making these brackets. So I had everything set up at F11 and two seconds uh, ISO 100 without any filters. And that was gonna be my one image, but the sky was totally blown out. So I thought, okay, what I'll do is, is take a five shot bracket internally with the EOS SR and then do this same process that I'm about to show you now and it was Thor's idea to say hey why don't you uh, start like overexposed highlights uh, so that you're actually exposing to your foreground in the riverbed and then work darker from there by only changing your shutter speed so if I started at two seconds uh, I could then move uh, to higher to get a faster shutter uh, making the scene darker until I had the proper exposure for the sky or whatever exposure I wanted and that ended up being six images so let's jump back into the computer and I'll show you how to bracket these images for beginners a really simple and fast process. Back in Lightroom we want to import the six images. Once you've got your six images lined up you literally can just highlight all six of them, right click on your screen and go to photo merge. You want to merge the photos as an HDR. Now again, this is the really easy way of doing this. You can also do this in Photoshop with luminosity masks. And what you would do there is open your images in Lightroom, right click, uh, and then open these images as new layers in Photoshop or as layers in Photoshop. Uh, but I'm gonna show you the easy and quick way to do this. Uh, so once you have the HDR merge preview, you've got two options right up here at the top. The two options are auto align and auto settings. Auto align should be automatically uh, selected, which you should keep. And then auto settings gives you what Lightroom thinks is the best, um, you know, I guess edit for those six blended images or bracketed images. Now, I think that this looks really, really sort of overexposed almost, a lot of really high shadows. Um, so what I, you could do is, you know, keep just the auto align and then edit it yourself from zero, uh, which I know a lot of people do, but in the sake of making this video, I think we'll keep the auto settings and I'll show you how you can kind of play with those once uh, you've got that image. So once you've got uh, auto settings and you're kind of happy with how it looks, you can hit merge. And now we've got our merged HDR image. So what we'll do is select that and go into the develop settings and you'll see under the basic tab on the right hand side that Lightroom has automatically adjusted all of these uh, amounts to what it believes is the most balanced uh, settings for this image. Now, one thing that I wanna do right away on a bracketed image is go down to your uh, remove chromatic aberration, which is right here under the lens corrections. So definitely take that out to remove any kind of like uh, sort of bluish or green tinge along the sharp outlines. Um, so definitely select that right away. Um, and then you can come back 
to the top here and actually start to play around a little bit with the image to make it a bit uh, darker, uh, to make it look a little bit more realistic. So one of the things that I like to do is play with the graduated filters and the brush tool uh, and you know you can sort of do whatever feels best for you to make this HDR bracketed merge look a little bit more realistic. Uh, personally I think it looks okay right out of the uh, the automatic uh, settings from Lightroom. Uh, however it is kind of you know blown out and really vibrant and uh, and kind of like a poppy image. So I don't want it to look too fake but at the same time I want it to look nice so that I feel confident sharing it with you in this video and on Instagram. So uh, that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to quickly go through some basic basic edits uh, and speed it up here in Lightroom and then show you the finished product. Alright, and there she is. That is my final image that I'm pretty happy with. I just spent maybe the last like four or five minutes editing that mostly with the brush tool and some digital gradient filters uh, and then just playing around with the color a lot too because there was sort of a, a different uh, tinge between the green and like the kind of yellowish green uh, and I tried to sort of balance that as best I could uh, across the image and I think that it looks pretty nice. So in the in the sake of this video and showing you sort of uh, basic bracketing for beginners and how to merge that into an HDR in Lightroom and then just re-edit it yourself, I think this is a really good example and a, a very nice result. So let's put that onto uh, the final part of this video and let me know your thoughts in the comments. It'd be really cool to get your feedback. Uh, I know a lot of you are photographers and I know a lot of you probably bracket with Photoshop uh, as layers with luminosity masks or some of you are bracketing here in Lightroom with the same version that I'm using. Uh, I think that there's many different ways that you can do it and if you're still happy with your end result and it looks good and you're maintaining the image quality then you know, do what you're comfortable with. Uh, you can always learn different ways. So if this is new for you, give it a try, go out, bracket a couple of images, put them into Lightroom and see if this uh, technique works for you. So as always, I hope you liked this video. Stay tuned because we got a couple more videos, I believe two from Iceland that are looking amazing. We got some of the best light, just uh, incredible conditions. And be sure to go and check out Tom's channel for my broken finger saga. Uh, it's been uh, quite the interesting few days working with this uh, with this slight handicap and it's been a really really fun trip overall so uh, thanks again for watching I hope you like this video and I will see you on the next one that's that that's that <laughs> Ask him how to pronounce the volcano. Oh yes. No, One please don't, wrong. please yeah. don't. How many mosquitoes are in Iceland? None. Zero. Zero. Awesome. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. 2.30 in the morning. 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. 3 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Time to get some.